And in so much as we know that by his divine law, nations like individuals are subjected to punishments and chastisements in this world, may we not justly fear that the awful calamity of civil war, which now desolates the land, may be but a punishment inflicted upon us for our presumptuous sins to the needful end of our national reformation as a whole people? We have been the recipients of the choicest bounties of heaven. We have been preserved these many years in peace and prosperity. We have grown in numbers, wealth, and power as no other nation has ever grown. But we have forgotten God. We have forgotten the gracious hand which has preserved us in peace and multiplied and enriched and strengthened us. And we have vainly imagined in the deceitfulness of our hearts that all these blessings were produced by some superior wisdom and virtue of our own. Intoxicated with unbroken success, we have become too self-sufficient to feel the necessity of redeeming and preserving grace, too proud to pray to the God that made us. It behooves us then to humble ourselves before the offended power, to confess our national sins, and to pray for clemency and forgiveness. These are the words of the 16th President of the United States, Abraham Lincoln, in 1863, during some of the darkest days of the Civil War. What he describes is a famine, a famine of righteousness, unity, healing, peace, and faith. We have forgotten what God says, and we have forgotten God he says. And so he calls for a national day of humiliation, fasting, and prayer in the hopes that God would heal the famine in the land. Famine is not the same thing as hunger. Hunger is the body's need for sustenance and food. Famine is the lack of sustenance available Famine impacts not just an individual, but a people. It's a collective experience. You'll remember that it was famine that caused Abraham and Sarah to journey to Egypt. Generations later, God raised up Joseph to help the Egyptians and the whole region survive a seven-year famine by storing the seven years of plenty. Famine still causes whole regions and nations to experience hunger. But over and over again, the prophets speak of another famine, a famine of righteousness, a famine of goodness, kindness, love, and faith. As the prophet Amos says, not a famine of bread, or thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. In the last year, we've experienced a collective deprivation, a famine of physical safety and healing from the pandemic, a famine of employment, a famine of food and nutrition, a famine of racial equality and justice. There's been a shared famine of national and international unity and cooperation to meet the challenges facing the human race. There has been a famine of respect, kindness, and empathy at all levels of government and citizens toward one another. In the words of President Lincoln, we also 
seem to have forgotten God. We seem together to have swelled in national pride and arrogance. We seem to have taken our prosperity for granted and intoxicated by our unbroken success. The Apostle Paul says, For you were called to freedom, sisters and brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the sinful flesh, but through love serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not consumed by one another. Because we have become less aware of our dependence upon the God who provides, we have fallen under the delusion that we do not need God or to listen to the word of the Lord. And in our ravenous pursuit of the American dream, we too have exploited one another. This all points to not a famine of bread, not a famine of natural and economic resources, but to a famine of hearing the words of the Lord. We deprive ourselves of the spiritual resources that God so graciously and eagerly wants to give us and bless us with, and to love and to bless others selflessly and sacrificially, sacrificially like our Lord. The prophet Isaiah envisions the word of God being lavishly poured out on all humanity, filling and enriching every human soul. For as the rain and snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle. And it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.